16. Um, okay. Make sure your red lights are on. Okay. Uh, I guess it's working now. Okay. Did you, did you record my opening or not? No, do it again. Oh, please. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Because of a one-minute delay, because of technical problems, I am now reopening the meeting for the Natural Resource Committee, the meeting of November 14, 2018. Um, the, um, uh, one of the items that we had here I actually requested to come before us. I had seen the document being, uh, I had seen the application uh, being presented to the plan to the planning uh, for planning commission meeting, and that's 5B. And we have people that are here to speak to that particular item. So I'm going to change the order here, and we'll, uh, okay. we'll go ahead after after we start our old uh, new business conversation, starting up with 5B, and then go on to 5A. Mm -hmm. uh, are there, is there anybody here wanting to speak on anything that is not on the agenda? We also have a presentation from Friends of Trees. Which yes, we do. A, That's yeah. right. Mm -hmm. And so we'll go ahead with that presentation for Friends of Trees. Okay. Right away? Yeah, we'll go ahead and do that right now. <laughs> Hi. Um, pushing me to the front. <laughs> yeah, just make sure that red light's on so we can hear you. Yeah. It's glowing. Yeah. And then introduce yourself. Um, hello. Thanks. Hi. Sorry. Uh, uh, my name is Ian Bonham. Oh, yes. My name is Ian Bonham. I uh, work with Friends of Trees. Uh, we are a nonprofit organization uh, based out of Portland uh, that has actually been working in Oregon City for the past, ooh, since 2015. Three years? Yeah. Yeah. So this will be our fourth, uh, well, our, maybe our fifth year. Uh, working here in Oregon City. So, um, actually, no, early 2014 we started. So, um, I am curious if there's any fo anyone in here who's already familiar with the Friends of Trees program we've already. Actually had, we've actually had a presentation. Oh, everyone over here. Oh, great. So, you, brought, you met I'm going to actually tell you, however, that actually Friends of Trees was involved in a planning in in the McLaughlin neighborhood years ago. 1999. Yeah, so yes, we, I lie. Yeah. <laughs> I want to make yeah. sure somebody else got credit for saying Yeah, you. it's, 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 that's old Friends of Trees. So, so I actually, I actually did. Old uh, Friends are good friends. Yeah, we got a new logo. So, um, I, um, I actually did check in. I think it was Erica that came a little while ago. So, um, I did check in with her and I was like, did you check, go to the Natural Resources Committee? And she said, I don't think so, but I don't well, think she remembered. Presentation I think, uh, I think it was. Uh, it was on the um, uh, certification of, of uh, properties right. in terms of yeah. their native uh, species. Oh, cool. Well, I'm here with a little bit of an basically an update. I think she also gave like an overview of, of our programming. So I can skip past that. I'm going to pass out this paper because I don't have a PowerPoint. Here you go. You got it. Thanks. In case you all are interested. Um, so, uh, like I said, in uh, 2015, uh, uh, well, actually, I'll just say my role at Friends of Trees is to organize neighborhood-wide tree plantings. We also do natural area restoration um, in Clackamas County, uh, but in urban areas like Oregon City, we focus on neighborhood tree plantings. So uh, these are usually street trees or yard trees, large form trees that aren't going to get trampled by people walking around. You've seen them all over the place getting planted um, on the street. Um, in 2015, we planted about 93 new trees in just McLaughlin and Barkley Hills. Uh, in 2016, we expanded and included rip the Rivercrest neighborhood and planted about 92 trees. The following year, we planted 88 trees in the, uh, actually, it says three neighborhoods, but there's four, including South End. Uh, and then this year, we opened up our process to all Oregon City neighborhoods. Uh, so we're planning a very large event uh, where we, so far, have 110 trees reserved across the city. Uh, but uh, we're expecting to plant about 130 trees on December 1st. So you can see a little map on the bottom there of, of uh, places that have already reserved trees. And you can see it um, is expanded across uh, the entire city versus just the downtown core here. Um, 
So uh, I just wanted to uh, let you all know that this event is coming up on the 1st of December. Uh, and as we are uh, doing our, our, about to throw our largest event in the neighborhood, um, we are also a little bit short on volunteers. So if anyone has any resources they want to throw our, our people that they know, um, they want to refer to the program, uh, this is kind of my advertisement to let you know that this event is, is coming up and uh, we definitely need human beings who like to plant trees and uh, people who might have uh, pickup trucks to help haul those trees around. Um, I have some flyers too that I would be happy to distribute. Um, but if anyone has any um, comments about the program too, um, feedback, I'm also willing to take that on as well. Um, I have taken note of trees that we've planted over the past several years, like trees that have done really well and trees maybe that haven't done as well. I've noticed um, some trends like things like dogwoods um, don't really love, um, don't really love or McLaughlin uh, neighborhood apparently, um, or McLaughlin parking strips. Uh, but there are some really great uh, drought tolerant full sun trees that have been doing really well in the smaller strips downtown that I've been promoting this year. So um, we do have a 96 to 97% survival rate for our programming overall, which is really great for the first year. And we do automatically replace or offer to replace any trees that uh, don't survive in that first year. Um, but our goal is to get it, you know, to provide the best trees that are gonna survive in those spaces. So that's just to head off any, any feedback that's like, you know, your trees aren't surviving or something like that. But I'm curious if anyone has any feedback. Um, or is this just a question, really. Um, right now, what's kind of the breakdown in terms of street trees versus yard trees that people are asking for? That's a good question. Yeah. I didn't actually write that number down yeah. right now. Mm -hmm. I can't tell if this is even working anymore. Um, but uh, it's uh, what I've noticed is that most people go for the street trees. Uh, it's it's mostly because I think I go out and I mark the locations where the street trees are supposed to go, and I think people just are able to visualize the location a little bit better. Like, oh, that's where that's like a spot for a tree to go. Um, and it's about like 80 percent right now, maybe yeah. 70, 75 percent street trees, and about 25 percent yard trees. We also promote larger growing trees for the yard right. um, because. Mm -hmm. If it's going on private property, we hope that someone's going to plant like a, a bigger tree that everyone can at least see. Um, and then uh, there's also fruit trees available too for folks who are looking to, uh, you know, those have other benefits besides, you know, canopy and shade. So, right. but you can't plant those in the street. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they yet. <laughs> you can be all over Morocco. There's limitations <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Uh, no, is, uh, in terms of people that want trees on their property, is that deadline already passed? Yeah, so that, uh, while that has passed for this planting this year, um, I do have on here, oh, I didn't put anything on here. Um, if folks are interested in being on the waiting list for next year, we don't have a, we do an annual, or an, uh, we, our most recent contract was a, a biannual, I think that means two years versus to a year, but anyway, it was a two-year contract with the city, so um, we are hoping to apply for another, or maybe there will be another contract for future years. Um, so if folks are interested, I think it's great to sign up and um, express interest so that we can show that there's a growing demand for the program. Do but we usually have a waiting with? list. Oh, How sorry. do you sign up? Oh, you can sign up by going, um, you can just go to friendsoftrees.org, and there's like a very large button called Get a tree, and that's so that's where you go. You just type in your <laughs> type in your address, and um, it'll just throw you into the waiting list for next year. And um, the way the program works is, you can sign up for either street trees or yard trees. If you sign up for street trees, um, I will um, eventually come down, uh, come come to your house, and. Um, and measure out your strip and uh, assess for certain setbacks, like 25 feet from an intersection, 20 feet from a stop sign, um, 20 feet from any adjacent trees, depending on the size of the trees, um, you know, five feet from your water meter, uh, five feet from your gas line, your sewer line, if I can figure out where that is, otherwise we do utility locates later and figure that out. Um, and just make little white marks where it's safe to plant a tree, measure your planting strip, see if there's any wires, and assign you a list of street trees. Um, and if you just want a yard tree, you just sign up and, and you can just purchase a tree for your yard. 
Well, in the event on the, tw on the first, um, where do the volunteers meet you? Good question. So um, we, uh, for our fourth planting season in a row, are meeting at the Zion Lutheran Church on the corner of 7th and Jefferson. Mm -hmm. uh, and they've uh, generously offered us a space even though they had a conflict this year. So we have a little bit of a smaller space, but we're excited to meet there again. We've got coffee donated. Lots of people are bringing food. There's a free hot lunch after people plant trees. Um, so they show up, they drink hot coffee. Um, they sort out into little crews. They have a trained crew leader that kind of shows them where to go and shows them how to plant trees. Um, after they plant all their trees around the neighborhood, they come back and have a hot lunch there at the church. Yeah. And is it with meeting time? Oh, 8.45 is a good time to show up so you can get assigned to, a right, to the right mm -hmm. crew and then we head out around 9.10. That's great. You're doing some great things here in the city, and including the 1999. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't remember it, so I don't talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> I remember it well. Um, well, thank you for having me. And if you have any questions, um, I do have, I forgot to put my email on that sheet, but I have a, uh, it's E-N-B, I-A-N-B, like bumblebee, at friendsoftrees.org. Uh, and you can also call me at 503-467-2525. Uh, you can also email me at oregoncity at friendsoftrees.org. Uh, it's an easy one to remember. And I should add that the, uh, there's an ad in the winter edition of the trail news for this event, so. Okay. Um, and that's got Ian's contact information on it as well. Yep. Excellent. And I also have my very professional business cards I can hand out if anyone yeah, wants one. Yeah, so. I, I want one. And can I ask a question? Mm -hmm. I have purchased a, um, a tree for neighbors um, as, a, as, a, as a, a gift, and then we, they plant them. And one is now a rental. She's moved away, and one has died before. Mm -hmm. I keep planting it, but if... Um, if this one dies too, <laughs> and they're dogwoods, so if I need a drought tolerant tree, mm -hmm. I'll have a list there. I can purchase another one, and we can replace it out. Yeah, well, are, is um, you're asking me if there, what type of tree, or if or if well, you can, I mean, I, I would you like to get a tree through friends of trees? Is what you're asking? Yeah, oh. yeah. I bought them. Do I always buy my trees to you guys? Oh, just, interesting. Because it's help. Nice thing, and I also do the planting. So yeah, just um, uh, it depends. There's some. There's some weirdness going on about um, there. It, there, we're currently not able to replace trees that we planted before with Friends of Trees trees. Um, oh, okay. If they uh, and it's something we might work out for future. I don't. It, because of the way we're funded, it's mitigation funding. So. If but replacing means it's dead. Yeah, she's let yeah. her she's let her tree die again. <laughs> yeah, if a if a tree Oh if it's just the code thing. Yeah. Okay. So if a tree has been that. removed and is required to be replaced, um, Friends of Trees unfortunately at this is not under this current contract is not able to provide that replacement tree uh, because that funding comes from mitigation money, which That's is trees. Mixed that, okay. Okay. I see where it happens. Yeah. I go. Uh, yeah, this is for new trees. For new trees, yes. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, two for trees, but I will give you all these handy dandy flyers that you can hand out and, and you can email me and with any questions at any time. Thank you for your time and for Thank having you. me. And one one you. more time. Oh. What, your name again? Ian Bonham. Ian Bonham. Thanks, Ian. Yeah. And here, just uh, please take a few of these and, and share them with people you know. <laughs> well, thanks for making on such a short oh, notice, too. I appreciate it. I'll, I'll take several from my Oregon City Park Foundation. Oh, okay, very good. And you had a business card, right? Oh, yeah. <clears throat> I belong to an organization. I'll, I'll pass it around to all the volunteers there and see if they can put it on our Facebook page. Just in case you need it. Okay, thank you. <laughs> okay, uh, therefore, we're going to go into the new business section and uh, we're going on into uh, item five, uh, 5B. Uh, and that is the, um, uh, I'll see it eventually, if I see, uh, the, yeah, it's, it's been reordered there, Kanima Dock land application. 
Uh, we have your letter before us, and is there anything that you want? Why don't you come on up and introduce yourself? And uh, identify yourself and whether you're a resident of Oregon City, which you probably aren't. Oh, yeah. oh yes, you are. I, yes, I am. <laughs> yes. My name is Brant Potma. And, and, and Carolyn, my wife, and I are the applicants for, for this. Okay. We are residents of, uh, of Oregon City down by the Kanima area. So this is your property then? Uh, no, it's actually... So, you, so you're the previous owner, if I read the letter? Or the well, I'm going to explain the situation. Little, yeah, yeah. It's, and I can kind of, it kind of goes into it a little bit here. Yeah. Yeah. I just kind of just have a couple, few words to say, actually. Sure. And it kind of describes a little bit of the... Uh, of the situation, it's, it's a little comp more a little more complicated than that. And that, um, you know, I'll, should I just go ahead and read this? Sure, you know, it might be easier. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. Now the property is basically owned by the Kanima Club Association. It's one lot with ten easements on it, ten dock areas. And uh, we're one of the dock areas. We're one of the easement areas. And the the, pro, the things that we're dealing with with the planning commission is for our easement. They, they laid out specific items and points of interest that they thought were, you know, needed to be addressed essentially. And so we're, you know, so that kind of lays it out, I guess. And, and I've, I've got some visuals and yeah. maps okay. and overheads and things that I can point to if you want. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Great. Yeah. Great. So, I'll just uh, there. That's yeah. the vicinity. Yeah. yeah. So that that circles. Uh, okay. Now that that actually is that's not, not the right. right. Yeah. Right. That's actually a different lot. Yeah, so ours is uh, two down. Uh, let me get the red light to point. Yeah. That, that one. Exactly. Not where the circle is. Sorry. All right. Yeah, I know originally they had it down set down up for yeah. that, but then it, it, yeah. But yeah, it's that one. So it's there. And so the circles in the wrong spot. Yes. Okay. Yep. That's my bad. <laughs> The, the uh, that's a close up, okay. right? Yeah, that's a close up. So ours is the dock and the stairway, and the, there's some nice concrete that, that was laid, uh, and some uh, gravel laid on the right side. And, and and actually, we didn't do any of this. Uh, we so uh, well, yeah, we didn't do any of this. We purchased the property in uh, December of 2014. Uh, the work was done in sometime of 2013 by the uh, Paquette, Captain Paquette LLC, uh, build, the builders. And then um, we purchased it in December of 2014, you know, a year or so after it had been done. And then uh, a year and a half uh, living at our house, uh, we got a notice from the city uh, now, we didn't get a notice, actually, it's the Kanima Club because they are the ones that own the property. And so that's where the, the focus was as far as where all the any notices went. And so the Kanima Club received um, notification of violations for the area that happened to be our easement, which is that one there. So a year and a half went by after we had lived there, everything seemed fine until then. And then at that point, things kind of progressed. You know, we, we tried to basically resolve the issue through some other measures, measures other than the pre-application process. Uh, the builders actually took umbrage and really resisted any effort to go with the pre-application process. Uh, and so we then tried to find some other ways. And Long story short on that, uh, they didn't come to any kind of solution. And so really, the reason why we're stepping up, only being the easement, uh, the ones that can use the easement, is because we really, in the foreseeable future, we really didn't see anything coming out of the Kinema Club or the builders to resolve this issue. And this, you know, we're threatened not us personally, but you know the um, the Kanima Club was basically threatened with fines and fees, and you know, and, and saying if you don't get this thing fixed, 
you know, you're going to have some trouble. And so finally we, Carolyn and I, decided, you know, there's no end to this thing. The, the community club was not doing anything. The village weren't doing anything. So we thought, let's go through this pre-application process and see just what it involves and, and see what we can do. Maybe we can solve it. And so we uh, we have been doing that. For, we went through the, we did the pre-application meeting and we um, talked to Laura Turway and uh, the uh, engineers that were there and we had our engineer and Carolyn and I. And, um, you know, and they told us what we needed to do, sent us the sheet and, did, and so then we got our team of engineers and uh, building uh, land use consultant, who I think you guys are familiar with, with Rich Givens. Rich Givens, who read the letter, so. And, um, and so basically we've done all, and we also had a geotech engineer. We had two engineers, and uh, they wrote up their reports on the prop on the easement area. And so we submitted it. We have a hearing on the 26th, and you know, basically, the way we look at it. I mean, you guys probably know the background on this, especially Peter does on, on this, knows what the reports say and everything. But essentially, the reports, I mean, if you just filtered it down to a few sentences, it basically, it's, to me, and that's coming probably from a biased uh, position, it states that basically the area was such a fairly, uh, it's a minimal area that it's really not of concern as far as the geotech engineers, and it's not really a concern for uh, an engineer general area. But still, the city has to do what they have to do and for their for their reasons, and I, and I totally get that. But, I mean, we were basically forced, and, not forced, but we just felt like we had to do this thing. We never, we have, we have no obligation to do this. I mean, it's ultimately the Kanema Club's responsibility since they are the property owners. But, again, uh, we thought we'd just see what we could do and try to get this thing solved. So, I mean, it's been a big mess and it's been, we have been going through some incredible stress. Oh, and it's lasted so long. We never in our wildest dreams figured it's gonna last this long to get the thing resolved. Is uh, anybody besides the city involved, uh, permitting agencies, Corps of Engineers? At this point, no, that's still kind of in contention. The uh, Marine Board hasn't doesn't have to be involved. I don't they believe don't. so. <laughs> I don't believe so. That's that. Just recently, has been kind of brought up by mm -hmm. uh, Kelly. Well, I think the Department of State Lands has uh, already approved the dock. Yes, uh, the, right. the dock has already been. Yeah, certified. I'm not sure about those other agencies. So. Uh, yeah. Uh, what exactly is the problem? I'm trying to understand. Well, that's where I was going to jump in with. Yeah. Uh, a few details here. Mm -hmm. So I, I apologize for jumping in. Sure, no, that's fine. Um, I'll just go through this really quick. Yeah. So um, at, as you said, um, you have river access through an easement on the uh, properties owned by the Kanema Club, the boat dock, access stairs and patio were constructed based on aerial photography starting in 2013 and wish to retain the existing improvements. Um, so I've got some photos that explain what, what it all looks like. There was some site grading, removal of existing vegetation, mostly invasive vegetation, and new landscaping placed in the uh, patio area. Um, the complication, I think, with this application is that most of the construction and improvements are below the top of the bank. Um, yeah, if you'd go back to that previous slide. Yeah, I will in a minute. Um, the site is small, consists of a steep rocky bank. Um, they purchased it, I guess, in 2014, right? right. Um, and then the city initiated a code enforcement process in 2016, and that's continued through to the present day. Um, so this does trigger, um, on land improvements trigger permitting requirements from the city, certain improvements. and. Um, and then you've applied for your applicable land use approvals to remedy the, the situation. Uh, so this is a planning commission decision because of the nature of the criteria for the natural resource overlay district having to have 
a uh, discretionary review because it doesn't meet all of the strict criteria that are in the Natural Resources Code. Therefore, it requires a Type 3 review. Um, and then that's the aerial photograph. And this is a drawing from your application that indicates the, uh, the Oregon City's line of the GIS, uh, GIS edge of the water. And then where the surveyed top of bank is, is here. Um, so you can flip your screen over if you want to see it on your screens as well. So normally the buffer that we measure that the vegetative corridor width was measured from the top of bank backwards, you know, or sorry, up onto the land. And this, this is where, this is below the top of bank. So the mitigation approach here is sort of customized to the situation. Um, and uh, the Planning Commission will be discussing this on the 26th. Um, there's some pictures here. Um, this is the looking to the towards the east side of the gravel patio and wall. This is the dock looking northeast to the falls. And these are from the engineering and reports. Um, it's the riverbank from the dock looking downstream, patio looking upstream. Um, this was during a flooding event. And so you can see that um, in terms of what the city has to review for our criteria, we have floodplain requirements that are uh, for certain structural things in the floodway. And then we also, because it falls within two overlay districts that the city regulates, which are the natural resource overlay district, as well as the geologic hazard overlay district because of the proximity to Kanema area, which is a, a large historic landslide area. And then the banks of the Willamette River in that particular location are fairly steep. So they fall within the geologic hazard overlay district and there's a geotechnical report accompanying the application. Um, and as was explained, you know, the area here um, is fairly small. The mitigation approach includes planting of native plant materials to enhance the resource value. Um, and then there'll be some engineering review with respect to balance cut and fill to determine how much, uh, how much cut and fill was done and was it balanced in order to comply with the city's floodplain regulations. Um, in the pack, it's an extensive application. It's, a, it's 156 pages, a lot of technical details, um, two engineering reports, um, and uh, uh, this, is, this indicates what the, uh, the vegetation removal areas. So at the, uh, on the shoreline side, there's uh, removal of noxious reed canary grass, oxide daisy, blackberry removal, and invas other invasives, and also above um, on the upland area as well. Um, and then this is the, I, I believe this is the proposed planting. Yes. Okay. Um, and it includes preserving what, uh, what native species are already established there. And those are indicated here as well as planting uh, with uh, some uplands and shoreline species as well. Um, and there's some pretty detailed notes as to spacing and compliance with chapter 1749 planting requirements and that sort of thing. Um, this is a close up of the planting plan. And then this is a close up of the planting schedule, which I have not examined in detail. Normally what we do with these applications is we write a staff report and then we send it to our consultant, David Evans and Associates, our, our water resource management consultant to check that our findings make sense from a uh, 
ecological, environmental standpoint and in compliance with the code. Um, so that's an overview of the application. Now, what has triggered this is uh, what was done in the past in terms of construction of the dock, right. the survey. The cut and fill and the adding of the blocks, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. so you've got some retaining walls. And some my, my question is, why why wasn't this dealt with when it was originally built? Did they not go through a pre-application process and so on? Um, yeah, there was no awareness that there was... Um, that permits were required apparently and it was just done and then it was uh, called to our attention through the code standard code enforcement process yeah. the, this was mm -hmm. yes yeah and which started back interesting in 2016. because nobody can see it but the 10 people that own easements on the well we just respond to any kind of complaint whether it's anonymous or not you know, and then uh, make sure that we're working with the property owner to bring the property into compliance. So normally that means going through the process that you were, would have originally gone through to get a permit. I guess on the, um, what was the kind yeah. of the fairness question, something was done by a previous owner and uh, the current owner then is, uh, has it's, to... It appears so. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, well, I was that, didn't understand that last... Oh, that you made well, the, the construction was done before you owned the and then but then you end up being responsible for the mitigation. Oh, right, right, yeah, right. And that's what I was clarifying. Yeah, okay, uh, so if there's anything I said which you don't feel is correct, that's fine. We can talk about that. Yeah. Well, yeah. the only the only thing that I don't know if it helps our case or makes it worse. Oh, yeah, and I should say that staff doesn't make a decision in this case. We yeah. make a recommendation to the Planning Commission, and they're the ultimate decision maker. Okay. And their decision is appealable to the City Commission um, by either the applicant or somebody who makes a comment during the public comment period. And so, What is the Planning Commission's proposed action on this? We don't know yet. We, the staff report and recommendation would be going out one week prior to November 26th. That's, oh, okay. when, it's, that's when it's due. Um, and it would be, you know, it would provide a set of findings based on the application for compliance with all the relevant criteria. Um, the relevant criteria are right here. Um, uh, Natural Resource Overlay District, 1749. Geologic Hazard, 1744. Flood Management, 1742, Willamette River Greenway, 1748, and in the R6 Dwelling District, because the actual zoning there is single-family residential R6. So that's the uh, essence of the staff report, is going through and showing findings of compliance and adding conditions of approval, if necessary, to bring the, uh, to comply with the code and then make that uh, report to the Planning Commission during the public hearing. There'll be opportunity for the applicant to speak um, and anybody else can speak during the public hearing. And then the Planning Commission would uh, make a uh, deliberation and, a, and vote to approve, deny, or approve with conditions the application. So. I have, I'm sorry, I have one question. Too. Sure. Uh, so, did, did you say that mm -hmm. that the staff does a report? They they come up with their staff report. Then, then somebody from representing the planning commission goes down to the site. Is that, um, is that what well? No, I mean and staff will write a, rec a staff report and recommendation, and then at the public hearing we'll present that. And this, the planning commissioners do have to disclose whether they went to the site, mm. and normally. You know, if it's not a publicly accessible site, they would look from the public right of way or from the river or someplace oh, okay. that's publicly I accessible. Gotcha. Yeah. You know, that sort of thing. Okay. Um, and they have to disclose that they did that. Um, sure. And uh, they're not allowed to talk to uh, anybody prior to the hearing. Uh, and if they do, um, they have to disclose that as an ex parte contact because it may influence their decision. Like when they're out there yeah, looking around. Right. Kind of so if they talk to somebody on site about it, they would disclose that okay. uh, or recuse themselves from the decision-making process. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Now, th these criteria are criteria that apply now. Yeah. At the time that the 
construction was done, uh, was it, were there different criteria that would have applied or? Um, yeah. I think, uh, no, in this, at least in terms of natural resource overlay and geologic hazard overlay, they were the same in, uh, 2013, um, as they are now. Okay. Uh, same as, uh, 1750 and the other chapters listed so the, here. The requirements mm -hmm. uh, for this gentleman and his mm -hmm. family mm -hmm. are not different than the requirements that would have happened if the application had occurred from the previous No, one. no, we haven't done a code amendment process okay. for, uh, since then. The, the current code amendment process does not apply to this application because of its submittal date, which is And, um, and you've been working with who, whom in planning? Um, I've been working, well, originally it was Laura Torway. Yep. You know, she's the one that was there for the uh, pre-app. And, and then Christina, talked to Christina a, a little bit over, over this period, and then also Kelly. Mm -hmm. I met Kelly for the first time, and Christina really in the last couple, three weeks. So Yeah, and the but review Kelly's planner is... Yeah. Uh, I think Kelly and Laura are kind of tag teaming on the review on this one. So, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. let me get this straight. Yeah. So far, you haven't told me anything about the value and function of this violation right. or this land mm -hmm. that the violation occurred on. Right. So, so far, and to me, from what I've seen, uh, it doesn't look like much. Yeah, I, uh, I, so I have only had time today to review a few aspects of this application, and I haven't read the existing conditions report that's in the packet. Uh, the last time I was at yeah. Feck and Brew Pub, was a nice day and I walked around out there and I looked and I down the street and I looked at it, those docks and stuff and uh, I wondered about them and but I never noticed that anything looked like some kind of perturbation that needed to be remedied. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, that's, and that was the end that I was walking towards. Uh, yeah, so. it's certainly unusual because we're not dealing in this, for example, in this picture, we're within, we're below the, well, we're right at what appears to be the water line. And not within, and then uphill of there would be vegetative corridor. It's extremely rocky. It's basically the railroad grade bank. Mm -hmm. Uh, which has been graded for the railroad, and it's in very difficult to get something established on that. Um, Impossible, because they yeah, spray it the railroad the was there before right. the natural. <laughs> exactly. The railroad was there before the natural resource overlay district was applied to this area, mm -hmm. obviously, because uh, we've had natural resource code probably since like 1989 in various forms. And the railroad was there mm -hmm. since. 18 yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, the, like I said, the mitigation approaches have to be customized, you know, for the situation and uh, appropriate for whatever impact is really, wh whatever impact to whatever functional value is there. Well, you're looking for water storage, mm -hmm. you know, in a flood. Um, so my first question is, uh, was the water storage impacted? Uh, well, I don't think I could measure that, knowing how much the Willamette flows. Yeah. In this area, because we're in, we're so close to the Willamette River, what I read in the engineering report is that basically if you, you're, you're letting any drainage go directly to the river. So what they're principally worried about is water quality, mm -hmm. uh, not how it's conveyed, because it's going to go straight to the river. Um, if they've created a lot of impervious surface, I mean, the, our definition of impervious surface includes hardened gravel, you know, because that can be 
potentially impervious, so it may not be, the, I mean, in the determination of what is net new impervious surface here is probably very difficult to make considering what was, what was rocky before. But I, like I said, I would encourage the committee to read the review, report in more detail. Um, and then this is, and you know, you have opportunity to provide written comment up to the end of the public hearing. And on the 26th, yeah. The, uh, I, I guess coming to his uh, point, uh, could you bring for the map, the planting map yeah. you had? With the, uh, the site map? So the site map for you, Indy. Yeah. This one? Yeah. Okay. Uh, wait, will you show, show plants, though, the one that indicated existing plants? Oh, the vegetation planting one? Yeah, let me find that. Uh, this one? Yeah. Yes, now where? Okay, so what it says at the top there is so those, all this is below the all of this is below the right of way of uh, Union Pacific, right? Yes. There's yeah, the, there's okay. the track. Yeah, yeah. Right, there's an abandoned track, and then there's an, the active track closer to the the house. Yeah. Okay. All right. So I mean, in terms, if this was farther away from the top of the bank you know, farther up the hill and, you know, then we could probably more accurately measure what the impact of the vegetative corridor width is. In this case, the vegetative corridor is virtually non-existent because the top of bank is so, is right there. Um, so what the city regulates normally is the vegetative corridor and not the resource itself that's more I just, uh, ask a question in the case yeah. of in the case of a flood event uh, mm -hmm. um, what happens to that vegetation yeah the new vegetation how's that the new vegetation yeah, yeah it would be gone yeah well it's not gonna flood this year so no 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 it's anything. not but the, darn it you know yeah. and it's mostly it's more than having a flood happen because that you know is fairly rare but it's more during the summer and during this dry season comes as far as getting water to those plants because we, you know, there's no plumbing down there. There's, there's water, lots of water, but not where it's supposed to be. And so it'd be really tough to plant things. We and, and have to get buckets and take them there. We've been doing it to drought tolerant thing all along promenade. Yeah. <laughs> Four hours. And, and, <laughs> yes, <laughs> right. No, that's true. I mean, that's possible. I mean, it is possible. But the thing is, it, it's not only the water, too. It's the, uh, it's the rocky soil. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, we planted some things, just, uh, just some little ground cover thing, right, where the wall is. And, you know, to get those things established, it took a, it took quite a while to, you know, watering it every day to make sure. Take a look at the planting on promenade. That's a that's a drought tolerant planting. Yeah, well, the yes, that would be not a lot in the river shore. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And I hopefully some of those plants that are in that design are going to be fairly drought tolerant too. So you know, but yeah. I appreciate that. I'm kind of really surprised that you didn't know about this when you were purchasing the property. If that was part of the yeah. part of the deal of getting the dock with, with the house. Um, yeah, you know, but that's then, come through our minds most definitely over the last three years, oh, uh, a few times. Uh, they did do a pre-app. Nobody knew about it, so there's probably nothing. That's, in the that's right. Didn't they? Yeah. So there's or yeah, whatever document it is. The concrete patio. Yeah. Uh, definitely uh, complicates it a little bit, but mm. um, the overall size is fairly small. Mm. And, and the, we've had that flood event, you know, it's like just the beginning of the action stage, I guess it was probably around 63 feet, you know, uh, high. And, you know, we had the dock there and it showed, and those photos showed how well everything responded to uh, to that event. Um, you know, we didn't, the dock just stayed put. There was no issue as far as that going anywhere. And, and all that left was just some mud uh, from the uh, muddy water. So, you know, it didn't cause any erosion or anything like that or any kind of issue uh, on, the, on the floodplain, so. Mm -hmm. 
It wouldn't unless it was up there ripping around the railroad track. Right, right. Yes, that's true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So is the dock there before the construction or is that part of it too? That's part of it. That was, you know, I don't know what the timing was. I, and this is all speculation, and I know it mainly from some aerial photos. So you can kind of see when there was no, one year there was no dock, another year there was a dock. And it was like 2013, 12 and 13 is when it kind of was done, I, I believe. Um, Looking at the previous owners, they kind of knew the rules. Kind of, yeah. Like I'm just, like I said, previous owners. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh. I don't know if there's anything that we might do in terms of uh, supplying testimony. You know, I th think when I was talking to my engineer today or yesterday, I can't remember which, he, he was hoping that if you had anything positive to say about uh, the plant design uh, would be helpful. It would be helpful for us. I know you're not, you're, your, your goal isn't to be helpful for us necessarily, but I mean, that would be, that would be something as far as where we're coming from. And, and, and you know, one other thing, and I don't know if this makes any, if it enters into what you guys do at all, but I mean, the cut and fill uh, issue that, that has come up, it's like 12 cubic yards. Yeah, that's normally something that the engineering department would make a determination about. Okay, and, and it doesn't uh, enter into you know, this It's really this not realm at all. It's, a, it's governed by the geologic hazard overlay code and, and the contents of the geologic report that you submit. And then our geotechnical consultant, Tim Pfeiffer, reviews that and either concurs with it or maybe adds some additional recommendations. Okay. And that's um, how it's pretty much an engineering planning decision. commission thing. Yeah, I mean, yeah. how it's constructed structurally, that sort of thing is a, is a little bit of a different discussion than, okay. than the resource values associated with the vegetation and that sort of thing. Yeah. I mean, yeah. if, yeah. I mean, I guess if I, since I'm talking about yeah, it, sure. get my plug in, yeah, sure. it's basically uh, the 12 cubic yards, if, if that was added, that should be removed supposedly because of the, the situation would be extremely difficult to cross the railroad tracks. I'm not mm -hmm. quite sure, you know, to remove 12 cubic yards from anywhere along that area. Mm -hmm. I'm not even sure if we were able to do that, but also anywhere that's along the river. Right. And you know, also. Yeah, uh, no, I get it. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah I, fill, I know you do. I know the cut you and do. fill well, discussion is, and I'm not an engineer, so I can't, I can't speak to that yeah, too. But sure. the uh, the uh, city engineer, Alita from and Jodrich, and Josh Wheeler, who's our development services engineer, you know, look at the cut and fill thing okay. and to say where it makes the most sense yeah. to to uh, to balance it. So. Okay. Yeah, I just yeah. I just thought I'd throw the plug in there. Just uh, fair enough. Yeah. Yeah. Everything we discuss here is part of the record. Okay. It's, um, you know, there'll be a link to the meeting so that the planning commission sees it. Okay. Yeah. Good enough. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Though. Mm -hmm. I think the uh, the challenge for the natural resources committee is is uh, probably understanding the substance of the application yeah. and whether you want to provide a recommendation or not. Um, um, and not having a recommendation from staff at this point, so. There's a person that, in terms of your planning, recommended the species and so forth that went in there, took into account that you might have some uh, being deposited on these plants and so forth, and whether they could actually make it through. Right, uh, right. Uh, I mean, that's, that's one thing that, uh, I mean, too, too bad if you made an investment uh, and say the, the plans chosen uh, were approved, and 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 you have a, a soil deposited, a soil and soil deposited at the site, and the plants are not able to survive that. Mm -hmm. um, so, well, that's why it's a discretionary decision because it's it's not as if they can do. A, well, they could replace plants annually, right? But, yeah. Mm, 
Oh, yeah. <laughs> but, um, you know, does that you make know, sense? You know? Um, so from, I think... From the, from the standpoint, I'm looking yeah. at it from a different standpoint, and that is that uh, what would the pre-development system, how, how would it have operated? You know, I mean, nobody's ever replaced plants for one thing. So right. what's there is what's going to be there. And yeah. what's going to be wiped out is what's going to be wiped out. And... Mm -hmm. um, and probably the best opportunities for establishment are above the stone wall, yeah. based on based on what we can see in the photographs. But yeah. that's a that's a snapshot in time. Right. Yeah. Would it would it help to remove the concrete and to put in more pervious gravel? I don't know. I I, think I can't really answer that. Uh, you're you're going to put more more responsibility on them. Well, you know, I'm, no, I'm just saying is that, you know, I mean, if we're talking about something that you need to have impervious. Um, you, you know, one thing, I mean, instead of the, con I mean, that would create issues as far as, you know, breaking it up and moving it out and cross railroad tracks and everything like that. Um, I mean, but we do have that, I mean, Peter states it as impervious gravel, but you know, it's 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 reasonably pervious. Yeah. Oh, I wasn't saying that that wasn't. <laughs> I was just saying that we some you know sometimes a, a surface can be hardened to the point where to it the point that it does. Yeah, sure. Yeah. No, okay, yeah. I understand yeah. that. That's yeah. true. But we, we could add possibly to plants to the, per, the, the the gravel area. You know, and make that somehow plantable, more plantable than what's you know. I, you know, I haven't really talked to the planning design person about that as far as like, you know, making up for the area that's gonna be on the lower area that could be, you know, things washed out uh, during some higher water and things like that, that maybe if we planted them more up in the, you know, made it more, of a, it could even fit into a design there where the, you know, where the gravel is potentially. Mm. Well, I think, uh, yeah, David Evans and Associates and the city's consultant are gonna provide some feedback on, okay. the, on the mitigation approach and um, and whether that should be uh, uh, just acceptable as it is or providing some more flexibility in there. So, you know. And, and, you know, I, kind of in a nutshell, I mean, I, to, I, I, we understand, Carolyn and I understand what, what, why you're, you know, why why you're going through this, why we have to, why we have to go through this, you know, because you have rules, you have ways, you know, you have to follow rules and, and check some boxes off and make sure everything's done correctly. I, we get that. I mean, we're, you know, we do things right ourselves. And so, um, I understand. we understand that. So, but every time we bring somebody down to that spot, like the engineers and the planning consultant, they look at that and they go, oh my God, <laughs> oh my God, what, what were they thinking? What did they do? Well, no, it was, oh, my God, what can you do? what's the problem? <laughs> what's the big <laughs> You know, it wasn't, it wasn't, oh, my God, how did they get away with this type right, of thing. It was, right. oh, my God, you know, what is, what's the big deal? And so we go, yeah. well, it, it, you know, it's a big deal to the city, so it's a big deal to us. So, but, you know, that's always their first impressions, and w which is mine somewhat, but... <laughs> Well, it, it is what it is. That the, 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 the original owners really did know better. <laughs> it, it's it's <laughs> impossible. I know. Yeah, I'm not saying yeah, yeah. It's that it's no, not no, your no, fault. No, but no, 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 I, no, I, I yes. Yeah. But and if, I have that, to admit, the bee horn, it was there. <laughs> right. No, I, I understand. The, the removal right. of all the blackberries, and if you That's get rid of the other invasives, and you yeah. put natives in, I think it's an improvement. Yeah. So. Yes, yeah. Yeah. I agree. With yeah. That. yeah. I mean, I agree with you. Yeah. Assuming yeah. it's structurally sound, and I, yeah. is the railroad worried about the track? And certainly, in? no, I don't believe so. <laughs> uh, the geotech didn't say that the, yeah. that, that the railroad would have any concerns about that, because they and, keep building it up every year, too, so. And certainly, there are similar improvements in the same types of locations along the bank. They're just older. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, you know, you have to kind of bear that in mind. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, thanks. Okay, well, thanks We're for really coming. I appreciate Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When the report comes out, yeah. um, Thank you all. send us Thank you. a link to where we can get in and see that. You're welcome, yeah. to, hang, you're welcome to hang around if you want. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so the reports, um, 
when you go to the city website, all of the agendas for the Planning Commission, City Commission, they're online. They'll be available one week prior. Um, and that and date again is the... Tw so, yeah, November 26th is the hearing date, so the reports will be available the prior Monday um, and published which, that day. Which is yeah. this... Which is, is this, this coming Monday. This coming Monday, yeah. So yeah. It's, it's it's almost ready to go. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, sorry. We had an extra, uh, extra come, on, come, come on up. Yeah. Come, yeah. come up forward. We have, you know, officially, we have to ask your name and uh, whether you live in Oregon City or not. I'm Ken Basinger. I am a resident of Oregon City. And I just wanted to... Uh, explain, I, there, I saw lots of confusion here as to uh, Lot 200. Uh, lot 200 was uh, created for Portland General, Portland General Electric actually, in the 19th century. Uh, they acquired that chunk of land that you see, 1.6 acres, so that they could flood it when they built the dam at Willamette Falls. And if you go to the next picture, uh, the, the close-up there, you can see under the water the original sand beach that used to be the Kanema waterfront prior to the flooding of the property. Uh, it raised the water level by 12 to 15 feet above the old ambient water level. Uh, Kanema Club was formed as an instrument to purchase Lot 200 from Portland General in 2009. And to do that, Kanema Club sold easements to the adjacent property owners for the exclusive use of that portion of Lot 200 that lies adjacent to their property. So this easement is 65 feet wide, representing the 50 foot width of the lot plus half of the adjacent alleyway. Or I guess in this case, it's the entire adjacent alleyway because of mm. the uh, double lot next door to that. Um, so these are not easements for access. I've, I've heard that these are exclusive use eas right. easements. So Kanema Club, while holding title to, to the property, actually has no user rights to any part of it because that's all been sold off in exclusive use easements. So that's the history. I just wanted to, to yeah, make yeah. that clear Same. because it's, yeah. it's an unusual situation and not one that's <laughs> immediately apparent. I okay. didn't ever know about how that happened because I had a young person who lived on a street and he goes, all right, put a dope boat out there and comes along with the docking prints and I was Well, and, and that's what we all did yeah. before we bought it from PGE. We actually thought we could pull adverse possession on them. Uh, but <laughs> you can't do that with a, uh, with a public utility. But... Uh, <laughs> So when we went out to buy it from them, it took them a full year just to find out that they really did own it. <laughs> Not really, because all the documents went to Dallas when it was Enron, oh, and then no. came back, and all the paperwork was lost. And so they, when they finally did find it, they said, yeah, well, we don't need that. So they sold it to us. So, well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And those are the two comments. Oh, yeah. yeah, very good. One, one other comment. Kanema Club is in full support of the applicant. Yeah, very good. Thank you. Great. Thanks, guys. All right. We'll, uh, we'll proceed on to... Uh, I'll, I'll tell you the story first. Um, uh, I, I missed a, I missed a presentation that the Natural Resource Committee was supposed to make for the City Commission, and that was. You know what? I was watching that on television. And, uh, and I was going, aren't they supposed to be well, there? <laughs> uh, for one thing, the, I, I wasn't aware of it. And what we did last year on the presentation, we all had a discussion as to what the presentation was supposed to be. 
and that has not happened. Yep. And uh, uh, they they got me off the hook, but uh, I, I I didn't even know I was on it. Uh, the, uh, the thing is that we will uh, I will be making a presentation December fifth, and uh, I do want uh, I do, do I, I want us all to uh, indicate the. Uh, specific items that we uh, that we want to cover, both in terms of uh, what has happened uh, this year, but also uh, reflecting on uh, things that we have talked about that we would like to see occur in the future in terms of our goal setting session. So um, uh, we'll be bringing up, I guess, the uh, agenda and. Uh, yeah, do you want to do you want to well, overhead of that or? Yeah, we can go ahead and do it. Um, oh, okay. But, uh, um, yeah, let me pull that up. The presentation. What? It's on, it's attached to your agenda, the staff report, and the recap of the agenda items. You should so, be able so the Natural Resources Committee agenda items 2018, we all have that available to us here? Mm -hmm. Can you, can you view, you should be able to view that. Yeah. Okay. I, I, I printed out my own co copy okay. here, but yes, go ahead and pull that up. And uh, and uh, I don't know. I don't know if we have to go through this all all these list of things, but I do want to highlight uh, things that uh, we have effectively done and uh, things that we've had concern about in the in the past. Um, we've reviewed the goals and so forth, but. Um, we talked, uh, you might take, take, if you haven't looked at this, take a, take a look at it for a moment. I have looked over it. Right. What I had done is um, in the staff report, just kind of Sorry. further summarized the major contributions, but I may have uh, overlooked some of the other mi more, more uh, minor ones as well. Um, so take a look at that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Give me help here. I'm stuck. Cool. Oh, thank you. So in my staff report, we've got what do you do? Oh, um, like that, and then what? Uh, and then where? Pretty uh, productive year, I would say. Um, providing right. feedback on the McLaughlin Tanima yep. Trail and the Filbert Run mm -hmm. Park projects. Mm -hmm. um, doing pretty extensive feedback on the amendments to the Natural That's Resource good. Overlay Code, the Tree Protection Code. Discussion about where to go with the Heritage Tree Code, which we still need to tackle. Yeah, there it is. Okay. Um, and the Public Street Tree Code. Uh, participating in tree planting, Arbor Day, Oregon City Enhancement Day, and the Habitat Improvement Work at Waterboard Park with the uh, OC Parks Foundation people. And then uh, we had a presentation from PGE about tree growth regulation hormones and pruning uh, and gave them feedback on that. Um, discussed now um, two applications within the ANROD at meetings, and then a pretty, pretty major uh, accomplishment working th with OC Watershed Council to get the stream signage posted. Um, and anything else? Uh, a couple things. Uh, on our, when we had our, we, we had, we were looking at our goals uh, just recently. Uh, when we made the presentation last year, and the Planning Commission also made a presentation that same at that same time, and both of us met, uh, talked the need of uh, looking at the uh, 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 the uh, I'm sorry the uh, designated waterways of the state and setting up setting up the uh, and. The natural resource uh, overlay boundaries around them. Uh, what progress is made in actually officially doing that? I thought you had mentioned that there okay. were four. Yeah, I, I I need to talk about that too. Yeah, I shouldn't include that. So the, because this the, this is something that advanced recommendations that we had made to the city commission last right. time, and, and then, I really want to bring that forward because right. to indicate the and, positive. Uh, Right, right, and yeah, and then I have been directed to um, update the NROD map for the Kanema wetland. Um, we approached the Department of State Lands and, and uh, at, did a public records request for all delineated wetlands accepted by DSL within the city limit. Um, and most of those, well, all of those we knew about, um, and all of those touched the existing boundary 
in some way, except for the Kanema waterway. Uh, the Kanema wetland it was outside of the Natural Resource Overlay District. So what that means is the ones that touch the Natural Resource boundary get the boundary, get the 50-foot buffer or whatever it is, you know, and so those would have been reviewed. Um, some of those projects were associated with um, enhancement. So the Kanema Bluffs project that Metro did, for example, went out and did wetland delineations based on the Corps of Engineers methodology, but because they were just doing an enhancement project, they didn't have to approach the Department of State Lands for any kind of permit. And so the Department of State Lands did not issue a letter of concurrence with the delineations that Metro did, for example. But those are records that Metro has, and they're part of the application that was approved back when uh, the city approved the Kanema Bluffs Enhancement Project. Okay, now the yeah. delineation we're talking about is and Kanema Kine is one that has the waterworks as part of it, is that right? Uh, well, we're about to go into the mapping process and determine what is and what isn't uh, uh, part of the buffer, and that's something that we we're going to be working through with you all in 2019. Yeah. Well, the one we, yeah. we brought forward uh, that uh, was the um, one there, of course, at the Filbert Run Park. Right. There, uh, right. Has anything, yeah. Is anything going to transpire there? Well, it'll be part of any, you know, implementation of the of the master plan that they go through. So, so yeah. Yeah. Is there, yeah. Is there a scheduled date when this is going to be? That I, I don't know. Yeah. Um, so, but you, you've, you're actually working on the Kanema yeah. delineation piece. Yeah, yeah, getting, getting uh, digitized, um, sorry, a GIS file for the digit, and so that we can include it on our map and then add the buffer in the right location. The odd thing is that we've already approved a development application based on the existing natural resource overlay yeah. Which is, you know, is that the cottage? Yeah, cottage yeah. homes application, um, and uh, so um, uh, you know the buffer would have the effect of uh, applying to any future addition to those existing cottages. So it's something that the uh, and those cottages have not yet been constructed, but we're in the process of reviewing the building permit for the first house now. Mm -hmm. so, so that's uh, that's the situation there, and it, and we've, it could heard extend, all, we've heard a lot about those. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and it could extend, you know, to the extent that there's a perennial stream that feeds into it that's part of that wetland complex, then the the buffer might extend to include that and the properties outside of that immediate development as well, because there's a slope factor as well uh, that triggers. Um, enlarging the buffer when there's a steep slope next to the resource or a slope of, of over 25 percent. So right now we're only working at that one side. In terms Correct. Of, okay. Yeah. Uh, and uh, yeah. no, you know, we we mentioned a, a review and I know, I guess a grant application was made to Metro for that, right? But when, uh, uh, it had low priority. A grant application, I'm not sure that we need to do that in order to do the work that we need to get it on the, incorporated into the Natural Resource Overlay District. As far as doing a more comprehensive citywide That's update, what I was talking about. is that what you're talking about? Yes. Oh, okay, All right. Um, I've heard uh, Laura talk about that a little bit, but um, yeah, we would need to approach uh, either Metro or Somebody. Well, my understanding of an yeah. application, and if you could check this out, was made, yeah. but yeah. when it came low on the priority list, we okay. get it. Yeah. If you can, if you can yeah, check well. that out, yeah. because yeah. If, if that was the case, I mean, the city has uh, yeah. has had made an application. It was just uh, right. lower on the priority list. Confiscated. I, I, I honestly can't answer you, but yeah. I'll check. You can check with yeah. that with it, Laura. Yeah. Yeah, okay. And I don't know what pro procedure or methodologies, given that it's been since 1999 was the Shapiro one, and it was mostly, uh, it was based off of uh, prior um, wetland, national wetland information, as well as 
ground truthing here in Oregon City to the extent that they could get access to properties and owner consent. Um, maybe we've got better mapping now, we've got LIDAR data, um, we'll still have to do some ground truthing associated with any kind of major update. And that would probably be either prior to or folded into a comprehensive plan update as part of an inventory that regular, you know, that we have to adopt for goal five, which is our natural resource and cultural uh, mm -hmm. land use planning goal. So, um, um, and is a comprehensive uh, plan too early to t say anything about, about it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I, yeah I, I honestly can't speak to that yet. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay, uh, then let's uh, further go on. If you uh, check in with uh, Laura on that particular issue, if we okay. go on here yeah. um, and uh, go through the list. Um, and that, my discussion, you had covered the February 14th piece there, and then the role of natural review. We have the presentation by uh, the uh, Friends of Trees and the Columbia, what was the name of the organization? Oh, Backyard Habitat uh, yeah. and the Columbia, um, yeah. And uh, Columbia the, Land Trust. Columbia Land Trust, that's right. And was uh, that this year? Yes. Oh, okay. Yes. All right, thanks. Uh, and um, good memory. Uh, yeah. They can't remember. Yeah, they have it's specific called. cities that they're working with, and I presume. And the letter of support was written this year. Yes. I think in February, or January or February. Yeah. Okay. And uh, yeah. I don't know if we're on the list of cities to have the certification or not. Yeah, the process. Well, the process is unfolding in Oregon City, and I know they had a few people sign up this year, but. Um, I think so so do the, the, the point I guess that I'm making yeah. is uh, a, a property owner can have their property certified. They will come in and do that. Yes. yes. Yeah, they sure can. Yep. And what, what do you remember what that was referred to exactly? Well, there's various levels of certification. No, no, no. The, yeah, uh, I, I, yeah. And oh, they, sorry. They go from low to high, just 5% of the... The lowest you know, I think we need an update on that. I'll, I'll check in and get and talk to, was it Susie Peterson, and see what we can find okay. out. But yeah. what do they call specifically call the program is what I was asking. Oh, the Backyard Habitat That, that was program. a Backyard yeah, Habitat because, program. Yeah. But it's a joint effort between um, Backyard Habitat and Columbia Land Trust. And the Audubon Society. And the Audubon Society. Oh, well, it's the Audubon right Society. Right yeah. there. <laughs> I had Friends of Trees, and it's the Audubon Society. Thank you. Yeah. Well, where'd you find that? It's in all my notes. Lots of notes in here. That's great. Yeah. So they're they are currently working in the city. Okay, that's good. What does it say as far as time on there? Does it have a year or is it is it just? I signed up for, to originally get certified, yeah. but I really know I'm not right there. I think it calls from about. All you need is five percent to get the one of their things. <laughs> I mean, they, they have they have they have three categories, and and, mm -hmm. and actually, uh, 
even even a low percentage of the uh, plants being well they're being diligent because they contact me every third month okay. and i'm going oh okay <laughs> <laughs> oh, <I'm not> sure. <laughs> um doug let me look back and then uh, update the list here okay for the exact dates that. on that I one that okay uh, and, 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 and well, I'm, I'm, I'm only right there I'm, I'm only given five minutes uh, to right. make a presentation so what I'd like to do is have you all take a moment to look through the list and see which ones that you you want me to emphasize in that five minute period I think I'll make a broad statement in terms of uh, many of these things that have come forward for informational purposes from the city, for like, for example, the uh, um, the equitable housing uh, piece and uh, oh, and uh, okay. um, yeah, I mean they'll have those they'll have the detail list in front of them, so you know. You can maybe just hit the high points. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But yeah, definitely your feedback on equitable housing was important, and then the code that was associated with anything to do with the trees and natural resource overlay district is part of an ongoing discussion that we want to have with the planning commission moving into 2019 mm -hmm. about tree policy in general. Um, so. <laughs> Things that, uh, for discussion purposes, um, uh, and we'll seek, uh, I'll seek, seek, and we'll seek your advice on it. But uh, we have, we've rec we've, we've discussed the possibility of having the arborist requirement on the uh, heritage tree. Right. right. And uh, I can explain why that we feel that uh, it's not required if it. Turns out the tree turns out to be diseased, it can be removed. Uh, and if it turns out to be a, a hazard, it can be removed. Mm -hmm. And so uh, it, it's a costly process. We don't know to what degree that it's inhibited property owners from asking for the certification uh, for a heritage tree designation to occur. Mm -hmm. But uh, it, 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 it is costly to bring in arbors to make that evaluation. Right, right. Right. We've, we've, and uh, I think I should bring it up uh, at this sure. point. Then that mm -hmm. uh, it would it, it would be uh, good if the city itself could bring in an arborist, either contractually or uh, on staff, mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. make evaluations in the city of trees that could include uh, uh, looking at heritage trees as to whether they should be. Uh, removed or not from the list for various reasons, but also the, 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 the trees that are, in fact, in public right-of-ways, parks, and everything else. Yeah, I agree. We could maybe, if we could get an arborist to come in and just do the city trees first. Yeah. And, and save all the ones that are girthy by our streets and in, and in certain spots. And one of, important. Yeah, and we've, we've made the suggestion of those cities that have arborists, maybe we could, in fact, uh, use their pay for their services. Yeah. And or and, 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 work our, with our yeah, community college, and even if, we, if we're going to pay for somebody, throw it in our own backyard. Um, yes, they... I'm not sure they, if we knew that. That's the no, thing. I was going <laughs> to say... Um, they really cannot compete with the private sector. Ah, uh, gotcha. Uh, you just reminded me of another thing that we did. Uh, we had the presentation from Clackamas Community College's right. instructor. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But that, yeah, okay. I had his information too. Um, I'm going to ask uh, you, you all uh, yeah. here. Even if you did it on your own, so we could take credit for it, what activities have you been involved in? Um, be they planting, be they, uh, have you gone back through neighborhood associations this year? I know that I mentioned that last I've time. I've been 
one association meeting this year. Okay, I, but you have gone. Yes, I have. Okay. And then I give uh, gave a list of volunteer hours to um, Peter of all volunteer hours that have been documented over and above park activities, okay. meaning organized activities, um, because a lot of them are maintenance, and I wanted to clear that we could count watering and maintenance of those as volunteer and, hours. Uh, and, and when I make that reference, I'll make it to uh, members of, I'm not going to draw out specific names of members. Yeah, uh, that's perfectly of the, fine. Now, but, I've been involved in several plantings, uh, and so I'll, I'll probably mention that. Anybody else have been involved in things of this nature? On Arbor Day or anything of that nature? The last two plantings have been timber games, so I've been go, but I'm going to be this one. <laughs> I went to the first one and then not the second and third. No, no, the, the ones that, one of the things that we have done yeah. this year. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, we've got over 100 hours. Yeah, actually, it comes up to 210 hours if you flip the side of the page over. Oh, sorry. Tape, there's a total of both of them. One was just promenade and one was just waterboard. And oh, those okay. are over and above. The organized okay. pools. Okay. Right? Uh, would you, would you um, uh, uh, fax that to me? Or not fax it to me, but. Uh, uh, I might just make a copy here, and hand it to him because I'd forward it, but mine was jumbled. Sure. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. You can do that. Okay. Uh, so the things that we have been involved with as, as, and I'll call it as members of the Natural Resource Committee. Um, uh, we'll bring back up the, uh, the, the need for the, uh, 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 going back and looking at the delineation, uh, uh, boy, I'm doing a bad job here, the delineation of these of streams and review it, uh, since that hasn't happened since 1999. Um, I think there was, as I said, I believe Laura may have actually sent a grant into Metro and it just fell off the priority list. But I, if in fact that was done, I surely want to give the planning department credit for it. Um, uh, anything else? On this list, uh, what would you want me to bring out specifically, uh, if anything? As I said, we're confined to five-minute presentation. I think the work that we did when we talked several times about the, the proposed amendments to the city code, um, where it pertained to, like, street trees and where it pertained to, like, natural resource overlay districts and how those impacted. Nancy, Nancy's mentioned the input that we have given to the city in terms of code development. Uh, were there anything, was, what, what things specifically did we contribute that went into the code? Um, so, yeah, the uh, guidelines, well, the code requirements for fences, um, the stipulation that an applicant um, can, uh, a should, confer with the natural resources overlay. And that, that has not yet been approved in the code, but that is in It's the, in the draft, yeah. yeah. And then... Um, we need to change that uh, public to applicant. Yeah, we did. Oh, we did. <laughs> okay, very good. Yeah, and then uh, also uh, what didn't make it into the code this round because it requires more work is the Heritage Tree Code. Yeah. Um, but there will be an opportunity for sure. Uh, coming around here. All right. Um, and then the street tree code, uh, we made some changes to that, um, but not big ones. Um, and then... We and was, was any of that based on what we said? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it was based on your input. And then the tree protection code um, as well, based on your input, the 1741. Um, okay. Can you... And we changed the defin. Well, we separated out definitions for hazardous trees 
and um, sorry, let me be clear about this. Previously, we had a dead, dead, diseased and dying tree, and then a hazardous tree, and those. Right. So those are separate definitions. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. In the uh, definition section, just to be clear. Well, on the tree protection side, um, right. What's involved in that? Well, uh, the planning commission, in the course of the code amendment process, had a lot of discussions. And I should tell you about this, um, because what they've done, there was a lot of discussion about annexation areas and trees being removed prior to annexation yeah. and how the difficulty being that that land is in the county and not regulated by the city. There are cities that have annexation policy, Lake Oswego being the example where, you know, if you remove trees within a certain time period prior to annexation, then you're at, you're delaying your application. You will delay your application, and then you have to mitigate it um, afterwards. Um, so it's kind of a it's a forewarning for anybody who's considering removing trees but wants to annex to the city for development that they are going to need to mitigate. But you know, we haven't done that. We don't have a policy for that yet. Um, the, the resolution well, this, that we oh, one in? it's a non-binding resolution that Lake Oswego has. Yes. Uh, it's not an ordinance, so, uh, yeah. So, yeah. non-binding means what? You can't do anything, really? Well, it means that uh, it comes up during the process of reviewing annexations, and the staff would be, you know, giving the planning commission and the city commission, you know, the full the, information and, and about what has happened. And then, and then they would say, well, this is our, this is our policy, it, and therefore you... Uh, must work with staff to mitigate after okay, the fact. So we'll go ahead and uh, mention, uh, give the Lake Oswego example. Example. And yeah, uh, uh, yeah. what we would like to see. And it doesn't just I know, apply I know it's to, come up from the planning commission. I, right. I know it's come up, and I, it, we brought it up too. It doesn't just apply to trees either. It applies to any natural resource that might have been affected prior to annexation, whether it's mm -hmm. stream bank or something like that, mm -hmm. or removing a an intermittent stream. And is that something on your list for this coming year? Well, it's okay. So what I didn't mention is that the planning commission has put forward a set of policy advisements for the city commission consideration with this code amendment packet. Mm -hmm. And that is one of them. Mm. Um, so, um, and it, and it's, uh, a recommendation to consider a policy like that. Mm -hmm. and, and that's in the oh. packet already. What we'll do is indicate our support for that. Uh, yeah, right. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, yeah, that's going up to the policy advisement letter has been in before the city commission in some form for a couple of meetings, but it's going to be there again on December 5th, which is when we have asked for the city council, city commission to, to uh, approve this packet of code amendments. But, uh, I, it might go into 2019, I don't know, before they're adopted. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the policy advisement letter from Planning Commission deals with all of the aspects of the, of the housing code that aren't zoning related. Mm -hmm. So having to do with system development charges and other incentives that are not really part of this packet. Mm -hmm. They have to be blessed by other departments and have farther reaching applications beyond zoning. So, uh, but are pretty much an integral part of incentivizing different housing types and a more diverse type of types of housing throughout the city. So that's the, the advisement letter. It's about a two to three page letter. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, coming back to the uh, backyard habitat piece. Um, yeah. Does, do, I, I, I know I had that card at one point. Does it indicate the three levels on that card? No, it does not. If it's some other materials. I'll, I'll find the... Yeah, I'll, let's that do that because is. I think it's good information for the, for the commission to have. Okay. Uh, that is, it's, it's not an arduous thing for... Uh, uh, Right. So they've got levels that are basically encouragement yeah, levels. I'll give them a call. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember. The, <laughs> yeah, your first level is kind of removing invasives and setting the stage, and then you get 
more points for how diverse your plantings are. Yeah. That sort of thing. Okay. All right. Yeah. And what I'll do is you and I will schedule some time to just sit down together. Sure. Yeah, yeah, let's go through that. All Sounds right. good. Okay, anything else to, that anybody really wants to bring forward on this uh, five-minute presentation? <laughs> <laughs> Can Trent come on? Give her another my, my, hope is they'll, uh, they'll, uh, my hope is they'll ask some questions and then I'll be able to extend it. <laughs> yeah, my okay. hope it is. It will be too. Um, thanks. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, Tree City USA discussion. Um, <coughs> God, just stand right here. Um, yes. Uh, Tree City USA reapplication update. Go ahead. So, we've been at Tree City USA since 2012. We have, in that time, twice applied for a growth award, which is um, be above and beyond meeting the four basic criteria. And those criteria are um, having a public tree code, um, maintaining a tree board or department. In this case, the Natural Resources Committee is our tree committee, uh, officially. Uh, spending at least $2 per capita on urban forestry and, and observing and celebrating Arbor Day. Um, $2 per capita, you say per $2 household? Is per household? The, that's what the Arbor Day uh, per capita, actually. So it's based on your population size. We go way beyond that. I think in each, every year that we've applied, we've gotten, to, uh, we've been at least $5 per capita, if we take into account. Um, so $2 is time. basically what they require. Yeah, yeah. And then to get a growth award, you have to have uh, established a program that does more than just meet these basic things, such as Friends of Trees planting or having a tree policy that applies to beyond you, just you, public as trees. As you keep you changing a code, does that apply? Well, when you write code that, um, yeah, that manages your urban forest in, in, in a in a better or more comprehensive way. Yeah, that applies, that complies. And then, you know, having an urban urban forestry plan, which is already yeah. does not have an urban forestry plan. We don't have a canopy plan. We, we don't even have an inventory. Yeah. Um, so those kinds of things are very, you know, really a fundamental part of a- Was well, this per forestry. capita or per household? Per capita. Okay. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, we share responsibility with planning, public works, and parks and rec for management of the urban forest. Planning basically does tree, street tree regulation and development review. So tree removal on development review properties and issuing street tree permits and making sure that there's mitigation. That's what planning does. Public works manages stormwater ponds, anything that's associated with the drainage area that is planted shading of streams to meet water quality requirements and total maximum daily load and our stormwater permit which is co which is part of the clackamas county stormwater permit so that's the public works aspect with respect to trees and then the parks and recreation department who does all of the tree work in the parks um, so those are the three departments who report back on each each report every year and we get a number of trees taken out, number of trees planted back, hours spent on maintenance, etc. And we are also allowed to count uh, all volunteer time associated with tree maintenance. And so this year, thanks for doing that. Hey, well, it, it'll definitely go into the report along with any pictures or photos of events. Open those up and see if you've got any of those photos because I kept sending you two in neat because all I can send out is two on my phone. Right, uh, right. And so. I should mention any work we do with Friends of Trees and agencies like Greater Oregon City Watershed Council uh, along Abernathy Creek and other areas that is directly tree related all counts. Uh, and we shouldn't forget about it because it's a lot of a commitment by not just the staff but the committees and the residents of the city. So, uh, I'm going to request that uh, 
You have that one slide available that shows the unnamed and named streams. And uh, okay. I might end up a little bit on that, indicating a desire on our part to actually go through some kind of a formal recommendations system that mimics the naming of parks in the city. Okay. Knowing that we can't actually uh, make the decision as to the names, but to uh, take the necessary action to get those stay, uh, streams named after going through a public process. Are you talking about the presentation to the city commission or yes yeah okay yeah so that could either be a well, we brought it we brought it up here and right right yeah. um it could either be an attachment to their packet sure that'd be does fine. that work yeah that'd yeah. be fine if we could bring this up on the screen when oh, okay you want to actual it. overhead yeah. okay yep okay one other question. Do we have any, uh, do we have codes about noxious weeds and evasive weeds? In the a very, very short section of quite old code. Um, I'd like to see us bring that up, maybe <laughs> in the 19th yeah. year. <laughs> it's, not a, it's not a comprehensive policy. It's a, it says that as part of your nuisance regulations, which is a whole host of things, property owners are responsible for keeping noxious weeds mowed but it doesn't talk about <laughs> eradication or things like that. Some uh, of them, it names like blackberries by name. Stimulates vegetative but, growth. You know, <laughs> pardon? Some of them, if you mow it, just stimulates vegetative growth. Exactly, <laughs> yeah. I mean, we were talking a pretty old piece of code. Um, so, yeah, it, it's worth looking at. Yeah, yeah, I think it would be. Uh, I'd uh, like to see that. It exists. We have to have some more verbiage in there about Yeah. I mean, exactly. Yeah, I mean, it exists in the nuisance code, which is like the public health and welfare part of the code. So along with noise and various other types of nuisances. But it, it's certainly something that the code enforcement department uses as an enforcement tool. So it can apply to any noxious weed, but it does get difficult. Remember when we had the presentation by Sam Lining? Sure. Mm -hmm. This was that this year too. Um, no, that was last year. That, I was yeah. the best way to ask him. Yeah. Say if it was he said how difficult it was for him to follow up on smaller infestations, you know, but can be reported. But it's it's difficult. So um, education is part of it, but then the code enforcement is our go-to tool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. Let's look at that language. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Great. Lead expert. Anything? Um, anything else? You got funny for a five-minute presentation. In any case. <laughs> <laughs> sure do. You're gonna, you're gonna have to talk like an auctioneer. To get <laughs> <laughs> I asked. But, 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 really, but really, an auctioneer says the same thing over and over again. It just serves two different numbers as they're doing. <laughs> I got to do, do better than that. <laughs> uh, Yep. Okay. Thank you. Let me write that up with you, Doug, and get... yeah, we'll set up a meeting. I'll try put a list together in the next couple of weeks and get together with you. I put defend December fifth on my calendar too. I'll be there. Yeah, yeah. If any of you, have, if you can make it December fifth, and uh, yeah, and I, I think it, I think it would be meaningful to mm -hmm. to have the group there. Yeah, I'm just thinking December 5th is the date that we're presenting the code recommendations to the city. And let's, if in the eventuality that the housing code part of it gets delayed, you might want to make a recommendation with respect to just the purely tree code or natural resources code parts of it. You can separate out those. I don't know. It's, it's uh, probably a way to, you know, get that stuff adopted earlier and not have it tied up with the housing code stuff. It's a possibility. Mm -hmm. It's not a bad idea. The sooner it gets adopted, the sooner we can implement it. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay. And communication. So, uh, let's see. Okay. We'll just start uh, with Matt. Uh, Matt, is there anything you want to communicate? Uh, not related to this, no. Okay. I just got back from vacation, so. That's great. Oh, yeah. <laughs> nice. Jealous. <laughs> <laughs>
Fancy? I know nothing this time. Uh, you, uh, you, you, you have to do it in 15 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> last, last month, uh, and, I, and I can't whip out the date because we changed it. it we did a very successful, had about 18 people at the Waterboard, um, Waterboard Park again. We have, with our grant that we got from Metro, we were able to adopt four and a half more acres and, and ivy removal. We rung the ivy off of those trees, which I know that sounds wrong because you can't ring a tree, but um, we had a lot of really interesting um, high school students, um, neighborhoods there, people that showed us really cool tools. A bearded, hairy guy in shorts and red tennis shoes and worked the whole time. Doug Neely cracked me up, showed <laughs> up in shorts and tennis shoes and climbed up on a hill and stayed there until the rest of us left. Yeah, Couldn't I was, believe it. I was sleeping behind the tree. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I was like, you can't go up there with those shirts. It's and anyway, uh, but we did have three high school students. They were so excited. They wanted to leave within about a first hour and a half because one got stung by a bee and then the other boys were wearing really nice Adidas. Then we got them on a couple of areas. Mm. And as soon as they rung one tree, and it was the girl, she got in there and pulled off that great, all of a sudden the boys were really jealous, and they got in there. <laughs> it was really, really, really great. And they took pictures. We met little kids and family coming up, and we gave great big old ivy <laughs> sticks that were like canes. We said, take it back to your school and let them know. They were the size of baby arms, these things. Anyway. Um, very successful, and yay about the spraying of the four more acres. I wish I was seeing tons of dead ivy. I'm not, but they just did another spray, and we have another one more after this. So we'll see. I've got a question of yeah. you. Um, spraying at this time of the year, I, I would almost think that the it would be more effective when the plants were just starting to grow. But it, you know, I don't know anything about the spraying. No. No. <laughs> Roger perennial. So any perennial you want to spray after um, the fall equinox is the best, but you is can do right? it okay. <clears throat> actually any time after July 1. But, uh, yeah, as long as uh, it's still warm enough for stuff to grow, mm. which is down to about 50. Okay, and we, we were safe in those, and we have another yeah, one coming do up it, in the if spring. If you do a perennial in the spring, you're wasting your money. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Because they take the stuff back to the early roots. spring, really and early spring. And it helps kill it at the root Not level. if you're mm -hmm. spraying perennials. That's number one rule of invasive mm -hmm. control is you got to know your weed, because you got to know whether it's an annual, biannual, or perennial. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, okay. it was very successful. Okay. Yep, that was it. That's okay, fun. Bill? <coughs> well, I'm sorry I missed the meeting last month. I, uh... For good reason. <laughs> yeah, I have <laughs> no excuses. I planned on coming, and the next thing I knew, it was the next day, and I went, dang it. <laughs> <laughs> but also, I, uh... <clears throat> My term expires in December, and I have uh, decided not to reapply for my position. It's been a difficult decision because it has been a real privilege and honor to serve on the committee. And But I, I got to let you know that my medical team's been trying to get me to resign since early 2016. <laughs> but resigning is just not in my blood and yeah. I couldn't do it yeah. but I just can't give it what I need to give it to feel like I'm doing the right job well I tell you your input uh, uh, during your tenure here has been really important to us yeah. and uh, uh, even though you might not have some of the energy to do other things um, uh, you know, your knowledge base and so forth has been beneficial and would continue to be so should you change your mind. Well, that's very kind to say, and I might do it because I I, uh, I hate to give it up, but um, I don't meet all the conditions necessarily, and I'm not doing business anymore, so, you know, although I do have an Oregon City address. <laughs> 
it's one of those foggy address situations, but, <laughs> but it doesn't. Are you in the city? No. No. Okay. But that's not a, that's not a requirement, is it? You have to work. You have to do business. I, let me check the bylaws on that. I I don't know. Uh, I think I think you you don't necessarily have to work, but you have to have business in the city. <laughs> let me let me look at it. Yeah, I'm not sure that we have an at-large position, do we, Doug? Uh, not that I know of. I know yeah. the only at-large one I know of is the uh, library board. Right, right, okay. Yeah. Um. Okay. Um. I guess it's my turn. Um. I've been involved, uh, and it is the uh, Oregon City. Uh, Greater Oregon City Watershed Council doing some plannings with students at Ogden on the uh, um, easement strip that Metro has purchased uh, through that area. And we uh, had a, a grant that we submitted and uh, and, and, and implemented. Uh, we'd had uh, Ash Creek Forestry come in for the weed control. Uh, and uh, we've been, uh, two of us have been out there uh, working with the students along with the instructors, a particular class of sixth graders that are involved in some type of uh, 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 natural resource studies and so forth, and they've been coming coming out. Um, and of course, they but they do it during their class time, so there's a limited number of uh, time. So the two of us end up doing a lot more work on the, at that particular site. Um, I'm. Um, also, uh, a, a group of, uh, associated with the Environmental uh, Learning Center, and uh, they're trying to zero on uh, offering, making offerings, a day or two offerings for people that uh, are uh, interested in specific items, including wetland delineation, having a, a kind of a not an official certification, but a, a, a course to, uh, for that, a aquatic plant identification, uh, and several other things that have surfaced where they actually did a bit of a survey to find out uh, where the interest might be in taking those kinds of classes. So uh, they hope to actually have something going in the winter term uh, to, to, to do this. So, uh, uh, okay. And, um, those are, this month, those are the those are the activities that I have been involved in. Okay, uh, anything else for the good of the order? Uh, future agenda items. I got some ideas here. Yeah. Um, well, uh, I can give you an update on the code at the next meeting. All right. Um, because you know there are tweaks that the city commission tends to make during the hearing process. Um, um, an update on the wetlands. Um, uh, the uh, an update on uh, this may not be actually one of the items, but we are doing a implementation of the Beaver Creek Road concept plan. Christina Robertson Gardner is the lead planner on that, um, so it has to do with adopting zoning and the financial mechanisms to put the plan into effect. Um, there's a, we applied for one grant and it didn't work out in the second grant to do that work. So we got that now from the state. So that's going on. And then, uh, as you may, as you know, Martin Montalvo moved on to Wilsonville. That's just, this is just an update, FYI. So we're looking for a replacement and that's a sore loss for the city because of his environmental background. Yeah, his, uh, he was the, uh, Public Works uh, mm -hmm. manager mm -hmm. uh, of the operations manager and oh, had a had a degree bad. in uh, degree in wetland biology. Oh, uh, too bad. Yeah, guys. so uh, he had a really nice going away uh, yeah. for him, and uh, I, I got yeah. up there and got <laughs> yeah. tirated at uh, Wilsonville because <laughs> their city manager was our assistant city manager at one time, <laughs> although he went to Silverton before he went to Wilsonville. Uh, our public works director, uh, uh, who did a great job, uh, uh, they stole her from us, and now they're <laughs> starting stealing Martin Montavo from us. And, 
<laughs> so I went on a, basically a tirade there. <laughs> That's right. People steal from that. <laughs> <laughs> non-compete clause. Well, he, he, yeah, he's, funny, he, 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 he said the reason he was going there was because it's only a 20-minute bike ride for him to get to the, uh, Wilsonville to work, whereas uh, he tied up in traffic trying to get yeah. here. So <laughs> can't argue with him. Yeah, no. I can relate to that. Is there any else you want to discuss the tram before? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we talked about putting like the noxious weed thing okay. on a future agenda. I really think we should. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Yeah. Um, noxious weed code. Yeah. Yeah. Now, these, these are future agenda items extending into the next year. Right. Now, it's up to you guys whether you want to have a December meeting or not. When will the city commission go in through their setting up their goals? Uh, when is that? Uh, January, I believe. It's the right. first week. Um, yeah. Yeah. So in terms of putting together recommendations for the budget cycle. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess I would say that uh, uh, some of these items that we brought forward here, the arborist, uh, funding the arborist position, um, uh, what else on the budgetary side would be necessary? Um, Updating the uh, wetland inventory for the city. Right. Um, uh, developing a, uh, uh, a a tree policy for annexation areas. Is that, that's that's a significant thing. Um, and then uh, promoting uh, potentially promoting uh, well. Promoting the Heritage Tree, tree Program, um, and then, and that kind of ties in with the arborist thing. Mm -hmm. and um, if we can't get an arborist for like on staff, maybe we can get one in contract just to get our tr city trees done. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Unnamed and named streams. So that's four things right there. It's forty-five second each one. So okay, that would be a December item, Joe. And those four things recap for the years out um, and then we'll have I don't know who we've had for applicants for your uh, positions that are timing out yet so we have an update on that okay yeah I, I had one person indicated to me uh, he's also on this uh, a group of the environmental learning center and he uh, indicated to me that he had applied. I don't Good. know. Yeah. All right. I'll check with Katie Riggs. Okay. All right. I think we had the I gentleman have. from Berkeley here last week, didn't we? Yeah. Yeah, he, 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 get, he sent in an application, he said. Yeah, that's the person I'm talking about. Oh, I, yeah. okay. I'll I think I'm sure it's the same person. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we may have some minutes as well uh, to approve. Um, check with our transcriptionist. Anything else for the good of the order? I don't think of anything. Okay. Great. Thanks. We did out the